In April of 2020, I founded the Prosperity Project uh, because I was really concerned that COVID was going to have a disproportionate impact on Canadian women. I wanted to be part of a group of women who were tackling a real-time issue that was happening in our country. I have two daughters in their 20s. Um, I could see the obstacles that they were facing even before COVID, and, and COVID, of course, just made those challenges that much harder for them. I knew Indigenous women, racialized women, women with disabilities, members of the LGBTQ2S plus community would feel it even more. And we needed to do something about that. Having the opportunity to connect with some of the most influential women across Canada to establish a platform to embolden positive change for Canadian women at a time when self, uh, social justice was at, a, at an all-time high after George Floyd, that was incredibly motivating for me. Our group of experienced professionals, together with other amazingly talented volunteers, are ensuring charities can continue to serve a diverse community of women and girls. The organization is supported by over 100 founding visionaries or visionaries who are all volunteers from across Canada. These are very, very successful women um, who are, you know, carving time out of their schedules. Truly in my heart and in my head, it drives me to be a better leader, to be a better woman, to be a better person. I'm proud to be involved with the Prosperity Project because I want to do something. I want to make sure that my three daughters have the same opportunities as my son. The fact that women were disproportionately affected by the pandemic, um, having to stay home, losing their jobs, playing double duty with homeschooling children, um, it just became really real, right? The urgency was there. I could see that um, how the pandemic was already impacting uh, my friends, my family, and my own network. We wanted to make a difference for working women and women who wanted to work. And I think it's worth the juggle. It's worth giving your time to something that means so much to so many people. I'm a firm believer that through tragedy, you can have great outcomes. And I, I, I've seen that in history, I've experienced it myself, and I think that we have an opportunity to do just that with the pandemic that we're in right now. We've had public attention called to them, so many newspaper articles. They could have been written 10 years ago, but they weren't. We keep going. People keep going. And somehow we find progress. It shone a really bright light to the economic impact on women throughout the pandemic. And I believe, or we believe, it will now become a beacon, a beacon of action and attention on the prosperity that Canadian women deserve. As we grow, We'll go, in, we'll go as well in boldness in terms of initiative, in terms of issue that we'll choose to address to make sure that those women are taking care of, that we'll be able to address those issues. The time is right, um, you know, to really get as many organizations as we can on board mm -hmm. to, to further the uh, work that we're doing. I don't think there's going to be any shortage of activities for Prosperity Project to tackle. Uh, no shortage of ways that we can continue to add value to uh, a prosperous economy. And that's what it's all about. That's why we call it the Prosperity Project. From the very beginning, we've married research with action. So we're going to continue to do the research that others hadn't been doing. We're going to continue to take action. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and we're just getting started. <laughs>